Vigilante Williamson here with a clip from my show. So let's get into this very sick and unfortunate incident with Rick Moranis as my mouse shifts the bed a little bit. And there we go. As my mouse amber turns. So Rick Moranis was attacked while walking near NYC's Central Park. I think it was on the street Central Park West. I'm not a New Yorker. So uh, don't quote me on that. Ghost bar star, Ghostbuster star took himself to the hospital and filed a re- police report. After Rick Moranis was attacked while walking in New York City on Thursday, Fox News can't confirm. The Honey, I Shrunk the Kids star, 67, was sucker punched by an unknown assailant while walking on a sidewalk near New York's Central Park. A rep from the star confirmed to Fox News on Friday. Rick Moranis was assaulted on the Upper West Side yesterday, but he is fine and grateful for everyone's thoughts and well wishes, a rep said in a statement. A surveillance video shows a man wearing a black eye heart New York sweatshirt and a backpack hitting Moranis, knocking him to the ground at approximately 7.24 a.m. Thursday. The attack happened a few blocks from Central Park West apartment building where the Ghostbusters character lived in the movie. Okay, that's pretty ironic. Um, Moranis took himself to the hospital, later went to the police station to report the incident. A law enforcement official told the Associated Press and civilians. Pub- police re- released surveillance uh, video of the assault, seeking the public's help to find the attacker, but did not name Moranis as the victim because of privacy concerns. Police described the incident as a random, unprovoked attack, but of course, people figured out who it was. And as uh, noted, that law enforcement official uh, let uh, talk to Associated Press. This is Chris Evans and his reaction to what happened. As a stupid, my mouse is constantly going to amber turd, so I apologize. But by amber turd, I mean, of course, shit the bed. Chris Evans says his blood is boiling over Rick Moran is being attacked. You don't touch him. And this is basically a uh, same report, but it shows Chris Evans' perspective. Chris Evans had a strong reaction to hearing beloved actor Rick Moranis was a victim of a random attack near his New York City home. The Captain America star reacted on Twitter after news broke Friday morning. My blood is boiling. Find this man. You don't touch Rick Moranis. Uh, And then, of course, this goes back into the report. NYPD released video of Moranis walking down the street in NYC. There's Upper West Side apartment in, by Central Park where an unidentified man sucker punches him in the head and walks away. So this actually these reports don't have the video. And it's probably best. I only think I can show the video. But this is a disgusting attack. And I hope to do. I mean, really, the dude should be charged with attempted murder. Dude, uh, Rick Moranis, 67 years old, could have died realistically. Having said that, um, this is going to be a kind of a can of worm statement, right? Like I said, I think the guy should should go to jail for attempted murder up under the jail, Big Rock, Little Rocks, as ABL would say. However, I, I was watching actually uh, FNT, Friday Night Tights, because I'm a huge fan of that. And I saw some of the reaction. And it, 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 uh, this is not the only place where I saw this reaction. It was like immediately, this, is, this has to be a hate crime because the, the guy, the assailant, was a black man. Has to be a hate crime. Clearly, it's because of the mainstream media pushing this ideology of uh, black victimhood, which I'm not for. I'm not for this black victimhood mess that's coming out either. Uh, the knockout game is something that only attacks white people, which, listen, I'm an old fart. I had some uh, I'm from Detroit, obviously. I had people from New York came uh, that I was really close with, uh, came to the city or came to the area, and they had told me about this knockout game. They were the first reason people to tell me about the knockout game. It's the early, mid-2000s. And it was not a racially motivated thing. It was just an ignorant motivated thing, right? So it was just, I'm sure, historically, most of the victims in the knockout game were black and brown because it was mainly in those neighborhoods. And it's stupid. It shouldn't exist. And I'm not sure if that was the motivation for this. I'm not sure what the motivation was for this man. He could It could have been a hate crime. It could have been he saw an old, old Caucasian man just said, I'm going to knock this guy down. Fuck it, I'm angry. And everything you know he sees on social media and the media spun him up. But can we at least get some investigation? I get it. I get it. That immediate snap reaction of seeing what you see creates a lot of emotion. But you're jumping to the same conclusions that I've seen you defend in other situations. You immediately knew this was a hate crime. You immediately knew it was racially motivated. Yet some of the same people in the very, you know, back when a lot of these incidents and these police killings and there's each one is his own monster, right? And 
as I kind of covered with the Breonna Taylor, there's a lot of a lot of fuckery going on with a lot of these incidents. But you share a lot of these people say, well, we don't know if these killings are racially motivated. And I agreed with them. So how in the fuck can you say for sure that this is racially motivated? You don't know. If we find this a cell, I hope we do. I know there's a reward for the guy and we find his social media is filled with all this crazy uh, anti-white stuff or anti-Semitic stuff. Then you can go down that angle. If there's more evidence, if he has a history of doing this, then you can go down that angle. But all you did is see the incident. You do not know what that man's motivation was before he did it. I think it's an attempted murder case. I'm not defending this man. Like I said, he should be up under the jail. You don't just hit random people like that. That's disgusting. Um, but this is something that's been going on in New York for decades. And it's not always racially motivated. It could be, but I, I just think that jump into conclusion, we can't do that. Everything we see in media, mainstream media, is meant to balkanize and divide people. And a lot of it is complexly so. So it can be something, like I mentioned these incidents, these police killings. There's usually some evidence for the police, some evidence against the police, for the most part. There's some, you know, a little bit black and white either way. And that's by design, especially if you know, like I said, with the Breonna Taylor situation, which I don't want to say too much. If you know, you know, there's some the fuckery about with that stuff. And there's some total misinformation of the whole case. The whole case has, has, uh, and something's rotten in Denmark about that situation. And some is right in Denmark about a lot of the situations we get the balkanizers, we get half truths, or we get a truth that is one side on on, on him, the Kyle Rittenhouse. He must be a white supremacist, or he's a soup, he's a hero. And neither are true, right? So we can't see incidents like this where it's just it, anyone universal. Rip Miranda shouldn't have been attacked. It's disgusting. Dude needs to go to jail. But we can't see these incidents and then add to them. Let the information play out. Let the police do their job, which I know is something that's not popular in this country anymore. But let, let's let see if this is a racially motivated thing or if this is a hate crime. Again, attempted murder to me should be charged if this guy is caught, and I hope to God that he is. But everyone needs to stop jumping to so many conclusions the instant they see something, especially when they'll criticize people for doing the exact same thing if they're on the other side of an issue.